What's going on guys? I'm Tyler and in continuing my series of Disney movie reviews I'm here to let you know that Sleeping Beauty is no perfect movie and it centers on three fairies named Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether who must keep Princess Aurora safe for 16 years because ever since birth she has been cursed by the evil Maleficent. And this becomes a challenge towards the curse's final few days where Aurora falls in love with Prince Philip not realizing that he's the man that she's betrothed to. Now, as I said with 101 Dalmatians, this movie was not a box office success, despite what some people may think. And a lot of that came down to production costs when it came to animation. They used different drawing techniques. It was filmed in widescreen as opposed to 4x3 because people really enjoyed the widescreen for the first time with Lady and the Tramp. And I gotta say, even though it lost a ton of money, the effort on the animation really goes to show. The designs of the characters, the castles, the locations, they're all designed to have this feeling of a medieval painting or a stained glass window. And it fits the time period very nicely. And I must admit, I'm a bigger fan of CinemaScope widescreen as opposed to 4x3. 4x3 just feels like they're cramming everything into the image and it's a little hard on the eyes for me personally. The choice to mostly include music from the Sleeping Beauty Ballet was an excellent choice. Each set piece, whether or not the scene has any substance to it, elevates the emotions that we're supposed to be feeling for each scene. Especially the climactic battle between Philip and Maleficent, the music builds up each moment, makes you feel suspenseful, and makes you feel like there's an element of danger to the scene. It was, it easily made it the best scene in the entire movie. And of course, you can't talk about Sleeping Beauty without talking about Once Upon a Dream, which is another great Disney song. It has simple but effective lyrics. The music is so peacefully composed, and Mary Costa and Bill Shirley's voices add a lot to what makes it such a charming and whimsical song to listen to. The fairies are also wonderful characters to watch in this movie, which is a lot more than I can say about the fairies in the Maleficent movies. The thing that I didn't realize until re-watching it the other day was that these characters take the extra steps to stay away from magic for as long as possible so that they can keep Aurora safe and hide any suspicions from anyone else. And when they do break that rule, because obviously they were going to at some point, they try and take every single precaution that they can in order to make sure that they're not discovered. And even though they are, you gotta give them credit for at least thinking a couple steps ahead. I like these fairies. They have very nice personalities. They're not one note all the single time. They have a wider range of emotions than most duos or triplets or anything like that. And out of all the fairies, my favorite was Meriwether because Barbara Luddy, the same lady who played Lady in Lady and the Tramp, gives the character this snarky attitude that not only gets her into trouble, but is also what motivates her to step into danger in order to save Aurora. But like most people, my favorite character in this movie is Maleficent. Her motivations, completely non-existent, like most people have pointed out. But everything else about her, like her design, just how much she relishes the joys of being evil, the fact that every scene she's featured in slowly builds her up to give her this really intimidating presence, and her evil voice and laugh. This lady was played by Eleanor Audley, who also played the evil stepmother in Cinderella. She just, her evil laugh gave me chills every single time. And the fact that they don't spell out her powers or the extra steps in her plan to make Aurora's life a living hell is actually what makes her creepy and unpredictable when it comes, whenever she uses her powers. Now, as for Sleeping Beauty herself, she, uh, yeah, she, she's got nothing. I give the voice actress Mary Costa credit for trying to elevate the character by giving her this lovable, innocent charm to her. And she has a really nice singing voice. After she did this movie, she ended up becoming a really successful opera singer. And yeah, the effort really goes to show there. But she does almost absolutely nothing outside of play with cute little animals and sing to them like any Disney cliche you would expect from her. And you know what? The romance between her and Philip didn't even make that much sense. I give Philip credit for being the first prince to have a name, let alone talk, 
that was revolutionary for Disney when that happened. And I like the fact that he was willing to marry just about anyone because he loved that woman, not because she was royalty or because she was a peasant or anything like that, which, trust me, that was a step up, but I have no idea why the two of them love each other, other than the fact that they like each other's singing voices. They don't know each other's names, they don't know how old each other is, they don't know where they live, but screw it! I met you, I love you, let's get married! It's basically that bit from Enchanted where the prince and princess mean they're just like, let's get married right away. They really weren't kidding about that. I know a lot of people are going to say, well, that's Disney princess logic. They've been doing that forever. Not at this point. This was the third Disney prince and princess that they had ever done. The first that they did was Snow White, which was in 1937. They didn't try the fairy tale thing again until 1950 with Cinderella. Nine years later, you've got Sleeping Beauty. And then the next Disney princess, I'm not kidding, was 30 years later with The Little Mermaid. Because this movie wasn't that big of a success, they did not try the fairy tale thing or the princess thing for that long because they were afraid it wasn't bankable enough. And for a while, we were kind of showing that it wasn't. And if anyone's going to point out that princess from The Black Cauldron, she does not count. Seriously, what is she princess of? At least tell me that. Sleeping Beauty does have a lot of fairy tale cliches, but it makes up for it by having beautiful music, beautiful animation, some really good voice work, a fantastic villain, and some likable side characters. And for all those reasons, I'm going to give Sleeping Beauty a 3.5 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of Sleeping Beauty. Be sure to stay tuned for more Disney reviews, and be sure to like and subscribe. Take care.